Hi everyone, welcome again to the course of structural biology. We are at our last module and today after understanding about the general view of drug discovery, rational drug discovery, traditional drug discovery, pharmacophore model, QSAR, de novo designing and docking based virtual screening. Today we will focus on a very beautiful question which I have already discussed a lot of time. When a small molecule would be considered as a drug. So, our today's discussion would be majorly focused on the draggability of a molecule, but at the same time I will introduce the part of case study which I will actually talk in the next class. So, let us investigate what is a good drug candidate or what are the criteria which makes a, a small molecule a good drug candidate. Through our last few classes we know that there is obvious requirement of good activity selectivity on the right target. We also know about it should elicit desired biological response. So, a small molecule it have to bind to the target, it should be specifically bind to the target and then after binding it would give some biological response. But a definition of a good candidate should not be restricted here, it should also have good absorption, good distribution, good metabolism, good excretion and toxicity which is known as admetox. Admetox play a very critical role in drug designing because as I have explained earlier, if a compound have all the quality to bind and showing biological response, still it should not be considered as a good drug until we know how this molecule is actually going and behaving in biology. So, an ideal definition of a drug candidate, a drug candidate suitable for clinical testing is expected to bind selectively to the receptor site on the target as we have talked about to elicit the desired functional response of the target molecule. Again we discussed, but in addition to have adequate bioavailability and biodistribution to elicit the desired response in animals and humans. So, it will have adequate bioavailability, it should be available in the biological system, it should go and dissolve and it should distribute well. It must also pass formal toxicity evaluation in animals. And if you see these are the major reasons for drug failure in clinical development. So, you see that so many things pharmacokinetics, toxicity, adverse effect of drugs, they are all responsible. And if you look at the role of admetox, where it comes the role of in silico, which is the topic of today's class today's discussion, you do research to find out the target at an average US dollar 300 million and is spent on the research and 4 to 5 years it take. Then you go for development dollar 500 million again in 8 to 10 years. So, whatever you do here would not make any sense if it go to the through the development. So, the big question is does the compound work in man because you have to put it on the human system and the failure rate over 80 to 90 percent because you cannot kill or severely affect a person by giving a wrong drug and that is where we have 
new thoughts as I continuously talk about the major principle of improving drug discovery is replacing processes using computation. Replace experiment use computer. So, the possibility which we are exploring here is identify admetox problems earlier in the process, more emphasis on admetox properties in lead optimization. So, if we do it something in the research level, it would help us to save this money. So, overall looking at the definition of a good drug, looking at the critical role of admetox in the system and the thought that we need to reduce the time as well as the cost, the idea comes is it possible that we will develop in silico admetox and introduce it in the drug designing. What is in silico admetox? In silico admetox is to understand the process of admetox and make models understand parameters which are critical for that and develop in silico experimentation at compared to what we do in biology. What is the challenge? What are the challenges actually? So, up to the drug designing, it was happening in the atomistic level. So, it was more possible to replace the process with computer because there are logics, there are rules, there are atom to atom connection. Whereas, admetox is depends on the biological effect completely and then it is very difficult actually to replace it the admetox experiment with computer or in one word develop in silico admetox. To start with first the focus is on in house design cycle if you look at as we all know it starts from screening, it go to heat optimization, lead selection, lead optimization, SOPP and development. So, those are the process initially screening, then heat optimization, then lead selection, then lead optimization, SOPP and then development. In this whole process, if we make a cycle where we guide optimization based on in silico model and then validate refine model based on new pharmacological data. So, in between we understand about the role of machine learning and we know that with a lot of experiment going on, a lot of experimental data already available, it is not difficult to make a training set, get the initial screening and then validate it with new cycle. So, coming to absorption, distribution and metabolism, you see that these are the system the dose go and directly come out in the excretion. Then it comes into the system goes through metabolism. Then in it comes through the gut oil, through portal vein come to liver, again including the metabolism, absorption happen and we get the drug available to the biological system. You have to consider the volume of distribution, its half life and design regimen, how often you need to provide the drug. Then you look at clearance, you look at absorption, oral bioavailability and again you design the dosing regimen how much. So, you get two question answered which are very critical, how often the drug should be given, how much drug would be given in one go. These are two very critical parameters you have to understand. So, these are called pharmacokinetic parameters. 
you have to consider the oral bioavailability which is the fraction of dose that enters blood circulation after first pass metabolism in the liver. Absorption is the fraction of dose that passes the gut wall. Clearance is amount of blood cleared per time unit. Volume of distribution Vd equal to IV dose intravenous dose by initial plasma concentration. So, coming to absorption for a compound to reach a tissue, it usually must be taken into the blood stream. Factors such as poor compound solubility, gastric emptying time, intestinal transit time, chemical instability in the stomach and inability to permeate the intestinal wall can all reduce the extent to which a drug is absorbed after oral administration. So, you put the drug by oral administration, how it go to the liver, how it become bioavailable, it depends on the solubility of the compound. So, now when you say compound, a good soluble compound is having good quality to be a drug. Gastric emptying time, how much time it takes. Intestinal transit time, how much time it goes in the flow. Chemical instability in the stomach, because in the stomach environment is the compound stable or not. The inability to permeate the intestinal well, is it able to permeate, is it able to go through the intestinal wall, all of them reduce the extent to which a drug is absorbed after oral administration. Absorption critically determines the compound's bioavailability. Drugs that absorb poorly when taken orally must be administered in some less desirable way like intravenously or by inhalation for example, Janamivir. Routes of administration are very critical and very important consideration. So, if you look the intestinal lumen to the blood, so it, it comes through paracellular transport, transcellular transport, carrier mediated transport and PGP which is glycoprotein mediated efflux. You could make many strategies here and these are the most common route of absorption and the criteria, here is the criteria, the molecule being non-polar would be good, molecular weight less than 500 means less than 500 Dalton is good. I talk about the membrane permeation, if you look at membrane we talked earlier when we are talking about biological macromolecules, lipids, you see that there is hydrophilic in both the side and hydrophobic inside. So, it comes from water aqueous environment to the membrane hydrophobic environment. Very important factors are penetration rate which is P into A into C1 minus C2, where P is the partition into the membrane, A is effective surface area of membrane and C1 minus C2 is the concentration gradient. Now, the partition into membrane which is the most critical factor here in the permeation, it depends on physico-chemical properties of the drug. For example, lipophilicity, molecular weight, hydrogen bonding and all those factors. It also depend on the concentration gradient which keep developing in the system once you start giving the dosing of a drug. Hydrogen bond donors and acceptors. The estimation calculation of hydrogen bonds gives you an idea of how the small molecule 
which is the potential drug interact with the target as well as other non-specific macromolecules or biological substances. So, you know if you understand the goal of the initiative, the goal of the development of this in silico admetox is make some rules which helps you getting some guidelines to make numbers so that you could correlate the number with the biological activities. This will help you to generate these numbers for different molecules and take a decision as much as this decision would be biologically relevant better would be your model. Because hydrogen bond is always a quantitative thing you could you know the target you could measure it. So, it is always a very helpful and critical parameter. This is a wonderful tool by tool I mean the estimation of hydrogen bond donor, hydrogen bond acceptor considering the small molecule interacting with the biological system. This is a wonderful tool as you get an idea of solubility specific and non-specific interactions. One easy example to explain is the increasing number of hydrogen bond which affect dissolvation. So, if you have increasing number of hydrogen bond then what will happen there would be kind of incorporation of irreversible nature because more hydrogen bond will make more tight binding. So, opening once the complex form the opening would be difficult hence absorption would be difficult. Coming to partition coefficient partition coefficient is again a very important factor. Before going into biology the context in which we are talking about if you consider partition coefficient according to the rule of basic science a partition coefficient which is considered as p is related to distribution coefficient which is termed as d is like partition coefficient and distribution coefficients are mostly same thing or related thing or similar type of thing is the ratio of concentration of a compound in a mixture of two immiscible solvents at equilibrium. And in most of the case when we come to biology we consider a aqueous or polar solvent with a non-polar hydrophobic solvent. So, in pharmaceutical sciences both phases usually are solvents as I told most commonly one of the solvent is water while the second one is hydrophobic such as one octanol. So, you see here the molecule is partitioned between a polar solvent which is water and a hydrophobic solvent which is octanol. Why we are doing that? If you remember here we have water and membrane the membrane is hydrophobic to mimic the situation we take octanol. Now, if you see the partition coefficient p the log p equal to log a h which is the concentration of the molecule in octanol by the concentration of the molecule in water. So, the log partition coefficient is log of concentration of hydrophobic by the concentration of water the aqueous solvent. Coming next the partition coefficient measures how hydrophilic water loving or hydrophobic water fearing a chemical substance is. Partition coefficients are useful in estimating the distribution of drugs within the body. 
hydrophobic drugs with high octanal water partition coefficients are mainly distributed to hydrophobic areas such as lipid bilayer of the cell. Conversely, the hydrophilic drugs which is low octanal water partition coefficient are found primarily in aqueous regions such as blood serum. So, see the goal was to make some numbers and make some numbers by making the model in such a way those number would be correlated to the actual effect of biology. Here we make number which is log p and this log p will tell you the molecule is hydrophobic in nature or hydrophilic in nature based on that you could say that the molecule would be distributed on the lipid bilayer or on the aqueous region such as blood serum. Log d is log concentration of the molecule in octanol plus the ionization of the molecule in octanol divided by the concentration of molecule in water plus the ionization model in the water. Very interestingly, you could see that as I told the log p equal to log concentration of the molecule in octanol by concentration of the molecule in water log d is log of concentration of the molecule plus concentration of the ionized part of the molecule in octanol divided by concentration of the non ionized molecule plus concentration of the ionized molecule. But if you think in octanol because octanol is hydrophobic no ionization will take place. So, this part would not be there. So, now log d equal to log p which is this minus log 1 plus 10 pH minus p k which is log p plus log 1 minus f ionized which means that there is a dependence of pH. So, the value of log d, log d is the distribution coefficient would be depending on the pH and now you understand that, that there is a dependence in pH. So, you have to look at the system and determine the pH. So, it is now become apparently important to see the pH range in the GI tract. The intraluminal pH is rapidly changed from highly acidic in the stomach to about pH 6 in the duodenum. So, if you see there are two things, one there is a variation. So, variation of pH is observed in the system 1, 2 between fed and fasted pH differs. So, there are two factors 1 the whole journey there the pH changes in addition the pH also changes if you have taken your food or you are in empty stomach and this will make clear to you why for some tests you have to be empty stomach and for something you have to eat properly. So, the intraluminal pH is rapidly changed from highly acidic in the stomach to about pH 6 in the duodenum. The pH gradually increases in the small intestine from pH 6 to about pH 7.4 in the terminal ileum. The pH drops to 5.7 in the caseum, but again gradually increases reaching pH 6.7 in the rectum. So, 
now we understand several factors, we could express them in terms of numbers which help us to develop rules. We know now about log p and log d, we know p is partition coefficient and d is distribution coefficient, but today I will introduce a new number which actually change the spectrum of admetox, especially in silico admetox. So, instead of log p value, we will talk about c log p value which is calculated log p. So, how we calculate log p from structure? When I say structure, we need the structure of the small molecule. So, fragmentation of solute molecule by identifying isolating carbons which are not doubly or triply bonded to heteroatom. So, our first job is to identify the ICs, the isolated carbons which are not doubly or triply bonded to a heteroatom. Remaining fragments are characterized by topology and environment. What is environment? The type of isolated carbon bound to it. C log p is a sum of contribution of all the fragments plus isolating carbons plus corrections. Corrections are based on effect. Corrections are made for intramolecular, polar, dipolar and hydrogen bond interaction as well as electronic interactions which is brought from modified Hammett approach. So, we are calculating the log p which we call C log p. C log p considered the isolated carbon, then the other remaining fragments and corrections which are made because of polar, dipolar, intramolecular hydrogen bonds and electronic effects. So, let us see how C log p calculation works. So, first you have 6 isolated carbons. So, you have 6 isolated carbon which means each of them with a value of 0 0.13 you get 0 0.78. Because of having a carboxy group, you get minus 0 0.03. So, first you have this 6 carbons which give you 0 0.13 into 6 which is 0 0.78. Then you go to the carboxy which gives you a correction of 0 0.03. Then you come to hydroxy which gives you minus 0 0.44. Then you have 4 hydrogens which gives you 0 0.91 and then you get the electronic interaction of the carboxyl and hydroxyl group which is giving you the value of 0 0.34. Overall, the C log P is 0 0.78 plus 0 0.91 plus 0 0.34 minus 0 0.44 minus 0 0.03 1.56. So, this is the calculated log P. I am sure that now you are very excited to know the actual experimental value, I would not make late and show you the value which is 1.58. So, now you could understand that how C log p is making the revolution because C log p value comes 1.56 whereas, the experimental value is 1.58. Let us take Another example here the hydroxyl group change the position and comes to the ortho position. So, here also you have extra thing which is the hydrogen bonding between the carboxyl hy hydroxyl group and the hydroxyl group. 
because of that 0 0.63 would be added and this makes the value 2.19 whereas the experimental log p value is 2.26 again very close. And if you are thinking that I am picking up the best examples and present to you, yes I am, but then I am taking you to again a more revolutionary work which is a plotting between the C log P versus CACO2. CACO2 is the values are coming from in vitro assay to measure the absorption rate. So, this is experiment CACO2 values are coming through experiment and when we plot the C log P and log CACO2 you clearly see a linear regression you clearly see a trend and that is what is very very critical to get a trend between the theoretical calculation with the experimental value means now you could replace the experiment with a computer calculation and all these factors are provided with a rule which is called Lipniski's rules for intestinal absorption or Lipniski's rule of 5. According to that rule, the hydrogen bond donor should be less than 5, which is the sum of hydroxyl and NH groups. Hydrogen bond acceptors should be less than 10, the sum of N and O atom without hydrogen attached. The molecular weight would be less than 500 Dalton and the log P would be less than 5 because all the values are multiplied by 5. So, it is called Lipniski's rule of 5. Lipniski's rules for intestinal absorption or Lipniski's rules of 5 gives you the first theoretical model to apply on a small molecule even before you decided to do the screening. So, even before the screening it is possible to check the draggability of the molecule using Lipniski's rule. How Lipniski's rule work for? If you see Lipniski's rule for drug molecule you will see the distribution for molecular weight we say it should be less than 500 Dalton. Now, if you plot it here, it comes the peak comes around 325 to 330 Dalton. Hydrogen bond donor, the peak is between 0 to 3. Hydrogen bond acceptor, the peak is kind of 6 to 7. So, this is hydrogen bond donor, this is hydrogen bond acceptor. The log P distribution, it comes around 2 to 3. So, this shows that when you make a big sample, still you get the values that they are actually obeying the Lipniski's rule. And then a bigger statistics even makes it more convenient, 87 percent of good drug molecule satisfy the four of the four rules of Lipniski. 7 portion compound satisfy 3 rules, 4 portion compound satisfy 2 rule, 2 portion compound satisfy 1 rule. Beside Lipniski, there are other example of different filters. So, here we make a comparison between Lipniski's rule of 5 with Weaver and Avia. 
So, whereas we know that in Lipnitsky the molecular weight should be less than 500 Dalton log P should be less than 5, hydrogen donor to be less than 5 and hydrogen acceptor is less than 10. In Weaver, they say that the molecular weight should be less than 770, log P should be less than 9. They did not give separate measure of donor and acceptor, they think that the whole thing should come together. So, they make hydrogen bond donor and acceptor and they make number it should be less than 12. Rotational bonds in a lot of case you will see that the bond rotation takes a major role in flexibility of the molecule and more rotational bond means more conformation and difficult to predict. So, they introduce rotational bond it should be less than 10 TPSA which is the surface area how to distribute it is less than 140. In avia the molecular weight is less than 1000, log p is less than 10, hydrogen donor is less than 6, hydrogen acceptor is less than 19, hydrogen bond donor and acceptor should be less than 22, rotational bond would be less than 19 and TPSA is less than 291. But in these two rules are there, but Lipnitsky is much more popular. Now, you would see some exceptions or you would say some factors which also included in the filter to get better result. I talked about the rotatable bond distribution. So, when you have compounds containing too many rings, they are often rejected. Reason, there are reasons about their size as well as when they have a bulk aromatic distribution that give them a flatness and because of the flatness they could be included. They could be bind to any macromolecular active site or they could be make non-specific binding and all other things. We also remove compounds which have toxic group like azide, diagenium salts, picrates, disulfides, 1 to dicarbonyls, thiols, phenols, nitrosos, azridines, periodates, simple anilines, they all are nitrosamines when we see the possibility of chemical compound to go inside the biological system and so toxic effect we try as much as possible to reduce or to remove those compounds or functional groups. We also try to remove compounds with reactive groups like aliphatic thioester, alkyl halide, halopyrimidine, imine, Michael acceptor, aliphatic esters, epoxides, acyl halide, azeridine, all those sulfonyl halide which are and heteroatom, heteroatom single bonds all of this we do not normally allow to be incorporated in a draggable molecule. Also, we remove inhibitors or we do not include inhibitors which gives good number which means non-specific binding to many inhibitor like this inhibitor it binds to DFHR beta lactamase, beta galactosidase and chymotrypsin. So, it binds to different proteins, different active sites. So, we consider these as a non-specific inhibitor. Also, as we have already explained about solubility, it is not difficult to understand that we remove poorly soluble compounds and if you see molecules which are insoluble in water, we try in DMSO 
because DMSO is polar aprotic and then if it is not soluble in DMSO, we generally remove them. We try to remove or reject inorganic and heteroatom compounds because we already study well about the known biological compounds or known biologically allowed atom containing compounds. Whereas, when we have bromine, fluorine, beryllium and boron all these new elements heteroatoms inorganic in nature we generally do not involve them. But being said that nowadays a lot of those moieties are successfully included. Compounds with multiple chiral centers are always very big problem. Why? Because if as you know when it is a chiral molecule it have R S or D L. So, one of the reason is purification. In each round you do need a lot of purification and even after doing careful purification you still have the both stereoisomer. But with all of these all you do correctly still you could have come up with there are situations where the drug is working, but it is not obeying the rules. But what we could do if something is working, it is working. A very good example is Paclitaxel or Taxol, which is an anti cancer drug. You see the compound which is isolated from the bark of the tree, it maintains two rules one, the molecular weight, which is not maintained, molecular weight, which is 837. You see, this is a quite big compound and hydrogen acceptor equal to 15, but even after that it considered as a good drug, but it is true that this drug have common side effects including hair loss, bone marrow suppression, numbness, allergic reaction, muscle pains and diarrhea. So, that again tells you, so why you use this? Because it used as an anti cancer, it is a very effective anti cancer drug, but that does not mean it is side effect free, which again proves the importance of the in silico model established. So, we have seen the in vitro effect now when you have the compounds, you put it in terms of bioavailability good is no properties out of range, medium is one property out of range and bad is greater than one property out of range, where the rules are based on C log p. So, now the log p which is considered in all the rules changed to C log p. So, we had log p, now we are considering C log p, molecular weight, hydrogen bond donor and acceptor, but now we are also including number of rotatable bonds and polar surface area which we have seen in other filters. So, the definition of the rule of 3 instead of rule of 5 of Lipnitsky, we call it rule of 3 provided by Astex. This is as follows, the study indicated that such heat seem to obey on average a rule of 3, molecular weight should be less than 300 instead of 500, the number of hydrogen bond donor is less than equal to 3, the number of hydrogen bond acceptor is less than equal to 3, C log P is less than equal to 3. But in addition, the result suggested the number of rotatable bond would be less than equal to 3 and P S A is less than equal to 60. So, five, 6 parameters molecular weight is less than 300, number of hydrogen bond donor is less than equal to 3, number of hydrogen bond acceptor is less than equal to 3, C log P is less than equal to 3 in and N rotation is less than equal to 3 and P S A is less than equal to 
60 including them which is called rule of 3 is now a beautiful criteria to check the draggability of the molecule. So, as we take a look of structure based drug discovery, we have the natural ligand, we get them directly or we get them through screening, we go for molecular biology evaluation, protein biochemistry, then we get the 3D structure determination of target and target ligand complex, if not we go for modeling and then we go for structure analysis and compound designing, biological testing, synthesis of new compounds and if promising we go for preclinical studies. So, coming to summary, the explosion of genomic, proteomic and structural information has provided hundreds of new targets and opportunities for drug discovery. The modern drug discovery process is increasingly becoming more information driven. Recent years have seen a tremendous increase in new technologies and methods for the designing of new chemical entities. Virtual screening and pharmacophore modeling which we talk about are state of the art knowledge based approaches that use structural information from both target the receptor, the biological macromolecules as well as the ligand. They are useful tools to find novel molecules with similar biological activity or to improve the potency, affinity or selectivity of active compounds of interest. The use of this drug designing strategies have increased enormously in recent years because of the availability of databases with millions of commercially available compounds as well as 3D structure of several target proteins. As we talked about, there are now databases. So, first we understand more about library, we understand more about automation. What is the automation? Automation to build up derivatives from a lead compound. We identify a lead compound and then suppose as I talked about this is a lead compound phenol, then we identify the positions and then make the available groups according to the possible interactions and then we include all the possible opportunities which could we think contribute to the positive interaction of the small molecule with the biological target and then we allow the program that is where the automation is coming. If you design and write, it is always difficult to make more compounds included in the library, but now we could deal with millions with the increasing power of the computation. So, once you get the lead, you would not be restricted to the making of the derivatives by just drawing it. You need computer to automate the information and that is why now what we are doing, we choose the groups which are possible to cram into the different, first we take the molecule. So, let us say this is the molecule. So, we know that there are 5 possible position, we assign the groups x, y here, we assign group z and m here, we assign n, p here, we assign o, q here, we assign a, b here and then it could be anything else, it could be similar, it could be identical. Then we allow the development of permutation and combination of all those options coming into the molecule which makes millions of them and we kept them in the library. So, that first development of the library. Then we do the parameterization. If you remember when I was talking about the PDB file which you have looked in the structure, I told that in the PDB file there are two parts, one is atom and another is heteroatom. While the atom are corresponding to the known molecules like 
if you have components the amino acids, the nucleosides, the lipids, the common carbohydrates, phosphates and all of them water they all the bond length, bond distance, dihedral and all those parameters are already there in the library. So, the molecules for which the things are known they are termed as atoms. So, they are there already in the library. On the contrary, the new molecules you are coming up, it is not possible to make the parameterization of all of them. So, that who are included in the heteroatom, heteratom is another concern and we have to calculate e for each and every new molecule. Now, again with the innovation of computation, we develop programs which could automate this. Structure based drug design has a long and rich history and continues to expand and evolve in response to scientific and technological developments and hopefully will have a long and interesting future in the identification and optimization of promising leads having high potential for generating new therapeutic agents. But as we have discussed today, it should not be limited to only identifying the molecule through high throughput screening getting the small molecule to the lead then lead to derivative then lead optimization and drug. You should also know that when this molecule have potential to be a drug or not and in that respective introduction of computational admetox evoked extremely high interest. Now, we know that the molecule we are picking up they are going to the end cycle or not. If we could estimate that if it could be a drug, if it could be having interaction and make biological response, it would not be considered as a poison which I have discussed in the last class. Perhaps very important, perhaps in the future there would be justification for a subdivision of computers in admetox. That is how it is important that we need a subdivision of computer in admetox. Many of the major pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, Bristol Myers Squibb, Eli Lilly, Pharmacia, Organon and with Eerst started showing significant interest in the field. Some of them I had gone through and I have included. A good area of computational admetox model related to descriptor type uh, classic user efforts, but little is done about compa or 3D user related work. One we have seen from Pfizer, which is modeling the intrinsic clearance of a compound. Currently as described in house data was used to build admetox related models which I mentioned earlier. Still at this point it appears that the industry relies heavily on literature data to build admetox model for publication because the field is on its young stage. Clearly as more admetox data is generated from higher throughput systems, efficient data management will be of major importance to enable generation of models in a timely and effective manner. Future areas of concentration and high priority for computational admetox are P glycoprotein, the human peptide transporter and the potassium channel HERG, but there are many more to explore. If pro progress in computational admetox continues as evidence, 
in future you could expect an even greater diversity of models, more novel approaches, more robust validation techniques and as opposed to retrospective analysis of literature test sets some real world success in the field of in silico admetox. So, in continuing in the schematics for structure based drug designing where we see first we select and purify the target protein, we obtain the known inhibitor on the other hand we go for X-ray structural determination of native protein. Then we come to X-ray structure determination of inhibitor complex, model inhibitor with computational tools, synthesis, evaluate, preclinical, clinical, in vitro, in vivo, cell, animal and human determine the IC50 come to a drug. But now we know that from today's discussion we have to introduce in silico drug ability that would help us saving a lot of money, that would help us selecting some compound or rejecting some compound at the initial level of the study, initial level of the projects which will save millions of dollars. So, structure based drug designing have the potential to save of years and millions of dollars that is what we are understanding through the discussions of last two days. After that, I would come to the case study which I talked about that I discussed about beta lactamase the basis of that. I talked about the very serious thing which is antimicrobial resistance. So, this case study is about combating antimicrobial resistance targeting enzyme beta lactamase applying theranostic strategies. What is meant by theranostic? It is very difficult to only apply therapeutic strategy though you are doing therapeutics. So, a combination of therapeutic as well as diagnostics is needed and together it is called theranostic. How important is the problem of drug resistance? So, if you see here you could see several options and their numbers in millions. The brown color columns gives you the representation at 2018, whereas the blue color column is giving you the idea of 2050. If you see, we have chosen all the factors which are actually causing significant number of deaths. If you compare measles, there is no significant increase from 18 to 2050. If you consider road accident, it is decreasing, diarrhea again it is you could say it is similar or decreasing you consider diabetes again it is like similar or decreasing cancer decreasing quite significantly. Whereas, all of them have similar number antimicrobial resistance which you understand very well staying home nowadays in the COVID era, but trust me if you could get the heat of COVID so much just imagine there are number of bacteria, they are around us, they are all developing resistance and the result is here from 0 0.1 million to 10 million that is the significant increase. So, it is one of the most like critical global problem. So, in the world of antibiotics since 1930 new drug invented old antibiotic got resistant. What it is mean by resistant if you remember I talk about the story 
in 1928 penicillin was invented and in 1945 Fleming was awarded with Nobel Prize. From 1928 to 1945 Fleming did not do much work on antibiotic resistance and why he did not do the work was understood from his Nobel achieving Nobel awarding talk where he talked in volume to the world that yes innovation of antibiotic penicillin is giving you a magic bullet to fight against bacteria. But remember if you overuse it, it will come back. The nature will fight back, nature help bacteria to fight back and when it fight back, it would create drug resistance. So, what is drug resistance? When you have an antibiotic, you are applying to the bacteria and bacteria develop mechanism so that the drug is not working is called antibiotic resistance. Now, why this significant state of enhancement? Because the ore is going, you keep inventing one antibiotic, bacteria come up with the resistance. But the problem is once one bacteria get one resistance mechanism, it is now spreading in the whole world, entire world. Like if you imagine you have a best friend you are a good bowler, he is a good, he or she is a good batsman. It is not possible for us to take the gene, to exchange the gene so that you both be a good bowler as well as good batsman. We cannot do that. Very interestingly, bacteria could do that. If one bacteria get a gene of resistance, it could pass it to another bacteria. There are several processes, conjugation is one of them, transformation. So, they could do that and that is why the problem is. In the entire world today, in this moment, one bacteria get a mechanism to one drug and it would start spreading it to the entire world. So, as I told from 1930 drugs came drug become resistant, but I will show you data after 2011 no new drug appeared. And without antibiotics what will happen? Think about without antibiotics no pregnancy no operation, even a small wound could be very, very critical towards death. So, the condition without antibiotics is considered as diagnosed for death. This is what I was talking about, the green lines is talking about the appearance of drug, whereas the red ones are talking about resistance. This is the antibiotic versus resistance journey from 1940 to 2020. The significant things are most of the potent antibiotics are showing resistance reducing our arsenal towards combating against the deadly pathogen like tuberculosis, anthracis and all of them. And as I told after 2011 no significant antibiotics appeared in the market. So, there was a continuous war going on, but 
gradually currently we are losing the war we are not making new antibiotics and the old antibiotics are resistant bacteria are powerful so the war which was going in a continuous manner we are parallelly like doing the war now somehow we are going into the loser side which is extremely critical so what could be a solution a probable solution is termed as dtms model what is dtms model as i talked about theranostic theranostic is diagnostic so d is from diagnostics therapeutics the t is from therapeutics then you need to understand from where the resistance are developing so for every country you need to map the resistance is it the hospital is it the animal farm is it the canal where the waste water the dirty water is going so by getting every information is called map the resistance scenario so the aim is from there and regular level surveillance what is that so you measure you make a map of india now you know that these are the animal farm from where the resistance is coming what type of resistance is coming which gene is getting resistant so based on that you have to control the usage of drug you have to take measures so that you could control the emergence of new resistance so this is called surveillance so dtms is diagnostics therapeutics mapping and surveillance this is considered as an upcoming map upcoming model to fight against those deadly pathogens this story is about beta lactam so in diagnostics beta lactam beta lactam is best diagnostic tools have to be developed then you and beta lactam are good because if you look at the structure of the beta lactam you see that it's a very unique four membered ring now you know about all the biological macromolecules if you see that you will never see any cyclic molecule present in biology which is having a four membered ring because it is unique you could utilize a beta lactam based diagnostics which would be specifically working for beta lactamase and once you have that you could develop the enzyme based screening kits these kits when you make more sensitive like it could detect urine it could detect even like all the excreted body saps saliva and all it could be used as biomedical devices introduction of microfluidic based tools will definitely increase the sensitivity of the diagnostics and also you could use in chronic wound dressing but as i told with the limited time and opportunity i have i cannot talk about those entire stories in details whereas i will talk about a small part of the therapeutics but i talk about this slide i take this slide as an opportunity so that you could understand how a holistic approach have to be taken if we have to fight against this deadly pathogens so if you are thinking why this is happening i would 
like to share the philosophy behind the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. Human us develop antibiotics to kill bacteria, right? But you know, if you look at from the perspective of mother nature, human is her creation, but at the same time, bacteria, the microorganism is also created by her. So, mother nature wants everyone to grow and being the most intellectual and powerful community, if we develop some mechanisms to kill them, mother nature wants to protect them with her unthinkable creativity, it helps them to come back. So, ultimately what I was trying to talk about a war between bacteria and human is actually become a war between human and mother nature, right? And because we all know, we all realize that how creative, how organized mother nature is taking care of the entire living world, this becomes a never ending war at least from the side of them. So, coming back to therapeutics, some interesting points if you look at the movie here. In this movie, you see that a lot of different serine beta lactamase of class A is presented. Very interestingly, those are enzymes coming from different organisms. Those enzymes are having very similar sequence and if you look at the movie, you realize that they have very, very similar structures. The 3D folds are almost identical, but they are different kinetically as well as projecting their behavior inside the organism. So, one a one enzyme is different from other, but even one enzyme going to E. coli and Klebsiella, they behave differently. And because of that, there are so many diversity here and when you apply drugs, they come up with resistance, they come up with power to diffuse the effect of the antibiotic. So, a very integrated interdisciplinary approach needs to be taken. You need to design new drugs, but think about if you are a drug designer of 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s. To design a new drug, you have to design a new drug. You say, what, what new things you are telling? to design a new drug, I, we have to design a new drug. No, being in the current scenario, you have to design a new drug with a heavy fact in mind that this drug should hit the enzyme in such a way. One, it should have universal capability to inhibiting each and every enzyme which I was talking about. Second, it would be very difficult for the organisms to develop resistance. So, as a drug designer of this new world, you have to design new drug targeting the intrinsic property of the enzyme. What is intrinsic property? Let us say you stand second in the class and as natural you want to beat who is the topper of the class. Now, let us consider 
you want to take some tricks so that you could stop the topper starting the things so that your road would be clear. To do that, you involve the topper, you push him or her to watch movies, to play games and all these things. But if you know what he or she likes, like a person like me, I am mad of cricket. So, somehow if you arrange a cricket match, it takes my whole day and that is the intrinsic property. Every pupil have their own liking and disliking and that is called intrinsic property. Similarly, in case of enzyme, they also have their intrinsic property. So, if by thorough interdisciplinary study, we could hit that intrinsic property and design drug through that, then it would be difficult. It is not impossible, but it would be difficult for the organisms to come up with resistance. So, we have to perform in detail characterization of the enzyme biochemically, biophysically, structurally, dynamically, every aspect. And we also identify the newly emergent mutant. So, what are the common mutant coming? What are the mutational hotspots? A lot of things you have to consider as a drug designer of current days. So, let us say you take an hypothesis, every beta-lactamases are different with individualistic uniqueness. What would be the solution? Solution is we have to study each other, every beta-lactamase coming out from any organism as well as their variants. And you could understand that is not possible, that is clearly impossible. Even Napoleon Bonaparte will say that. So, there are thousands of genes, their variants. So, you have to clone them, over express them, purify them, characterize them. It is not a finitely possible work. So, you have to adopt interdisciplinary approach combining microbiological screening with computational and experimental characterization understanding techniques. So, you have to divide the areas you to understand what type of genes are involved, what variation you do sample collections from the hot spots where resistance happens, you get them by mapping. So, sample collection, identification and genetic characterization of new gene and mutants and novel characterization or identification of novel gene, novel mutants. This is the microbiology work. Then in the computation, you develop computational database of those genes. In silico work where you develop data sets and then apply machine learning based prediction. Then the identified or selected genes you do cloning, over expression and purification and then go for enzyme characterization. Based on the understanding of the enzyme you do novel drug designing, development and testing. So, these are not unrelated, all of them are related. So, this is a approach which we call a true thorough interdisciplinary approach. In the next class, I would proceed from here, I would not go into a lot of theory rather, I would talk about 
a story of a successful duck designing. So, in today's class we talk about how we could find a small molecule draggable or not which is a very, very, very interesting and critical area of drug designing. If we could do that correctly, this would significantly reduce the time and cost and then we try to give you a brief of how complicated and how critical antimicrobial resistance is and how that lead to a world where a small wound could be critical, pregnancy could not be achieved, operations could be restricted because bacteria are everywhere and I hope you understand the importance being situated in a situation in a condition made by only a small virus. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing listener. Thank you.